Nature is like a medicine for our mental as well as our physical health, whilst also promoting and providing significant value for property developments. Biophilia has been, let's say, widely used to create strong connections between nature and our built environments in many innovative ways. It is shaping better cities. Biophilic cities are biodiverse cities. And these are cities that provide an abundant amount of nature that is directly connected with our built environments, inside as well as outside. So biophilic cities understand the benefits that uh, nature brings to their cities, as well as incorporating nature into their urban fabric with an objective of making people feel healthier and also making people feel happier. Nature has many benefits for our well-being. Nature has a calming effect. It makes us all live in harmony. It improves our memory. It reduces depression. It also boosts uh, workplace performance and also bonds people together. So there are many benefits that nature can bring to cities. Increasing the green spaces in the heart of our cities is an obvious solution. And that will also promote social sustainability. I believe that well-designed, let's say, green landscapes can act as a social glue to developments. And that's why we always uh, start our projects from the landscape. Because we do believe that they can bring people closer together. They can promote social inclusivity as well as community stewardship. At the same time, they can help to reduce antisocial behavior as well as crimes and stress. But here's a big problem. Some cities are sacrificing their green spaces to build more buildings for their growing population. But what if we could promote a culture where private developers could find solutions for integrating publicly accessible green spaces into their developments? This could obviously increase the value of their real estate. And yet at the same time, obviously you will have all the benefits from the social as well as the environmental aspects for their communities. And that will have a much bigger impact at the neighborhood as well as the city scale. It's not just about the quantity of green space, it's also about the quality and the accessibility as well as the multifunctionality of those green spaces. I always find it amazing how much a landscape can have an impact in a very small space. I mean, you just take two car parking spaces and you can create something very unique that's multifunctional. If people relied less on cars, so many opportunities can be created to transform existing car parks into green spaces. Green spaces have a positive impact on both pedestrian traffic as well as street life and also uh, nearby businesses. I think that green spaces is the heart of what makes cities both livable as well as sustainable. And actually one of the key measures of a livable city is also how enjoyable and convenient it is for people to walk. Planning, let's say, the most walkable city on Earth actually requires a totally different approach. So you need a different mindset when it comes to creating walkable cities. Cities need to be designed and optimized with many types of pedestrian walkways. And we are doing that, you know, in different modes, right? So creating pedestrian-only networks uh, that are shaded as well as connected with other modes of green transport and networks that will provide obviously residents with not just the most convenient and enjoyable way to travel but also the most safest way to travel to every aspect of the city. The landscape strategy 
has a huge impact and an influence to enable a design that maximizes the green space ratio to create a truly walkable city. Landscape design can promote many things. It can promote the social activities, it can promote biodiversity, it can promote microclimates. All of this can actually be mitigated through landscape design, including rising temperatures and urban heat island effects. The other challenge and opportunity is also limiting vehicle access. And that's a key, let's say, aspect of planning such cities. And that can be further optimized by reducing the walking distances for residents to their homes. So with every project, we are looking at car-free communities and very unique typologies for residents to be able to get to their homes, reducing that walking distance and closing the, the gap between the different modes of transport and that's important because our cities are becoming denser and what we need today is a variation of solutions and I believe that the next generation of sustainable cities will be designed with innovative green spaces that are not just beautiful right they are accessible inclusive and of course they have to be inspiring at the same time and that's why the most livable cities understand the value of landscape